Hey everybody, welcome to another uh, video about radiation and radiation detection related topics. Um, today I wanted to demo my new um, Alpha Spectra scintillator. Um, this particular guy has a really weird model number uh, that I can't exactly remember off the top of my head, but something like a 5i5 1.12 something or other, something like that. But anyway, um, this is actually a pretty darn sensitive uh, scintillator. And this is a sodium iodide, uh, thallium doped sodium iodide detector. Um, it was pulled out of some sort of uh, apparatus that looked like either just like a really big uh, scintillator array or a gamma camera or something. Uh, got it on eBay for 55 bucks. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty solid unit. I'm currently running it at 900 volts on this guy on my Ludlum 177. Uh, as you can see here, it's picking up, you know, shy of, uh, what would that be, 4,000 counts per minute. Uh, but the reason for that being that I actually have a bunch of my stronger samples in the room with me, and it's actually picking them up um, nearby. Normally you get about, uh, normally I get about 3,200 counts a minute on this thing. But anyway, so just some features. Um, I think I already mentioned that it's a, uh, it has a one by three inch or 1.18 inch by three inch crystal, um, which is here. And I added a little bit of electrical tape just as like a secondary seal, uh, to keep moisture out as much as I can. Uh, over here, I totally have a very, very, very hacked uh, adapter here. So basically, I came from uh, this cable and a really weird, uh, really weird uh, plug on it out to this BNC connector. Eventually I'll take this thing apart. Well, lab assistant in the background scratching himself. Um, but eventually I'll take this thing apart and put a BNC jack on the outside. Um, this is pretty nice. This is an adjustable gain knob with like a nice set screw or a, like a lock nut to uh, prevent it from being changed, the gain. Um, and then there's like these, it, this one came with these rubber shock mounts. Um, guessing it's to reduce vibration to keep things from moving around too much and separating the crystal from the PMT which is in here and I'm not actually sure what uh, uh, how many stages the photomultiplier or PMT tube is in here um, but anyway yeah so a little bit about this too and how this works so for those of you who don't know this is this has what's called a scintillation crystal in it and because of the way that gamma rays and various radioactive particles interact with the um, uh, thallium doped sodium iodide material in here. Um, basically the gamma rays interact with those molecules and produces like a single photon. And basically what happens is those photons travel into the photomultiplier tube and they get um, basically what happens is when it hits this one stage of the photomultiplier tube it actually increases, it actually creates more photons, and then it strikes another element, creates more photons, strikes another element, creates more photons, and so on and so forth until it's at a detectable level. So it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, yeah. But anywho, um, I think uh, the demonstration's in order. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and pause this and get my samples closer and set everything up. Alrighty, okay, back. Everything's more or less set up. I'm gonna have to pause because uh, having the samples in this area creates enough background to screw with my readings. But here I have my uh, Emory CM241. It's 0.9 microcuries and is an alpha emitter. Uh, as you can see here, here's the button source inside the bag. I'm not gonna pull it out. Inside the middle there is the uh, Emory CM241. So I'm gonna go ahead and take I'll try and get this all close enough so here we go now these are all um, super low energy gammas that this will be detecting uh, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, show you the scintillator so I'm gonna hold it right above as you can see here it goes off the scale for counts so we'll go ahead and uh, change the times 100 and reset Sorry about the camera there. 
started filming one-handed. So now that we're on the times 100 scale, we can see that we're in the hundreds of uh, hundreds of uh, thousands, or sorry, tens of thousands of counts a minute. So we're still going, and this is on slow integration. So we're right around 40,000 counts a minute, a little shy. And that's uh, detecting the gammas coming off of the um, one 0.9 microcuries of americium 241 um, And next I'll bring out a World War II era radium compass and measure that. Okay, back with the radium compass in place and just with the scintillator sitting here, I'm already showing probably 42, 4300, uh, sorry, we're in times 100, so 42, 43,000 counts a minute. And we'll just hold the uh, scintillator above the sample, like so. Bury the needle. Now we're in thousands of counts a minute, as you can see here from the knob. Yeah, let's see how we reset it real quick. So about a centimeter from the face of the uh, compass, we're already getting something like... Looks like we're gonna come to rest right at about maybe 180,000 counts a minute. So as you can see, this thing is pretty sensitive. It was also picking up my samples across the room, um, which was shown in like a slightly higher background radiation. So these are actually very awesome and very sensitive types of detectors. Um, really good for locating sources and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and get my final sample, which will um, be my uranium ore. Okay. So I've got the uranium ore sample, it's in a lead pig currently, and with the unit set on times 1000, you can see that there's a little bit going on, so we'll just drop it down to the bottom, or to the times 10 scale. Yeah, that's going to be not, it's not good enough. So I'll do times 100, reset, and through the lead shielding, and this is a half inch of lead inside of this pig with a... Uh, quarter inch thick aluminum beta shield. We are getting a little over uh, with it right up against we're getting about 280,000 counts a minute or sorry <laughs> 28,000 counts a minute. I'm going to go ahead and take the top off and pull the, the vial out of the seal and you can already see that the count's going up just sitting there bury the needle go to times 1000 and this is actually naturally occurring uranium so we'll see where it goes back to here I forgot to hit reset again so we're watching it drop and basically one of the things I want to use this for is uh, I would like to go prospecting for uranium ore, just like trying to find some natural ore somewhere. Um, and that's kind of one of the use cases I have for this guy. Um, it's also really nice to pick up things that like a Geiger counter doesn't do a good job with. Um, like, uh, um, you know, americium 241 and fire extinguishers or whatever as an example. Or fire extinguishers, fire alarms. All right, yeah. And so we've finally, by the way, come to rest at about 220, 40, 60. So, yeah, 260,000 counts a minute coming off of this naturally occurring uranium ore. So that's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, in conclusion, these are super sensitive and great detectors. Um, they're very, very sensitive, like even at background radiation levels with no sources, like, nearby. Um, still pick up like 3,200 or so counts a minute, um, which is great. But uh, yeah, anyway, kind of a, a cool thing. And for a $50 investment and, uh, you know, kind of a hacked BNC cable, this is not bad at all.
I totally recommend this. Um, the only thing that you have to worry about, though, by the way, is that these, uh, these, the crystals are hygroscopic, meaning that they actually want to, like, absorb water, chew it up, and soak it up, and then that turns the crystal in here into a toxic slushy. So you really want to make sure you keep these things dry and in a dry environment, and uh, also, like, very well sealed. Because you lose the seal on these, and the crystals are basically useless. Anyways, cheers.